DoorDash is doing a Super Bowl campaign called All the Ads, where one person gets literally everything that appears during the commercial breaks of the Super Bowl. 1,000 Popeye's chicken wings, 20 family-sized packages of Oreos, 4 12 packs of Starry, 720 packages of Reese's peanut butter cups, 80 drumstick ice cream cones, 130 pound bucket of mayonnaise, 23 bags of Nerds gummy clusters, 25 cans of Pringles, 288 packages of peanut butter M&Ms, 40 packages of Doritos Dynamita chips, a Budweiser class sale saddle, 60 bottles of Mountain Dew Baja Blast, and a Michelob Ultra Cooler. That's a lot of things. In the press release, DoorDash says that they started out as connecting consumers to their favorite restaurant. And then they mention where DoorDash has gotten to. It has transformed into a multi-category marketplace where you can get pretty much anything from your local neighborhood delivered, from food to flowers, alcohol, retail items, and more straight to your door. What started off as connection turned into mass consumerism. And all of this is a pretty good way to describe what's happened to social media since Facebook in 2005 to TikTok now. And it's why the ads for the Super Bowl are so weird and not in a good way. Advertising is breaking our brains a little bit and it's about where they are and how they're happening. So where are most ads happening now on social media? Last year, State Farm decided to forego spending $7 million for 30 seconds of TV Super Bowl time and the Super Bowl reaches about 100 million viewers more or less. And they decided to do their entire Super Bowl campaign on TikTok. It leveraged about 13 creators including their guy Jake from State Farm and they got 245 million views. Not a bad deal, but here's what they had to say about it. By solidifying Jake from State Farm as a friend and a valued connection, the brand is building preference and positive relationships that will be foundational for their future. They turned Jake from State Farm into a TikTok influencer. And that was effective. They weren't the only ones that went in this direction. FedEx did a whole TikTok concert to promote their package delivery. And FanDuel published 151 posts across social media platforms because commercials matter, but social engagement matters more. And this makes sense. The average user spends equivalent to one day per month on the app. The annual ad spend for social media is expected to reach $220 billion by the end of 2024. You have to be on social media in order to monetize these eyeballs. And you might ask, well, why is this a problem? Why are you complaining about it? And clearly it's working, right? Yeah, it's working, but at the cost to humanity. Look at this quote from a brand of canned water. Liquid death. Our competition is not other brands in the category, it's other things that you see in your social feed. That's our competition. Traditional ads, they're not competing against water, they're competing against everything for the attention economy. Traditional ads certainly sought to manipulate our brains, but they were much more straightforward in their messaging. And there are still some examples of ads that sell the idea of the product, but in a really convoluted way that is not the product at all. Just look at this Paramount Plus TV commercial. If it were a football, I'd be able to reach the top. What about a football-shaped head? We throw the child. Can you take me it's incredible. It's star studded. It's creed dripped. It's hilarious. But it doesn't tell you anything about the product. Drew Barrymore is there, maybe some sports, Peppa the Pig. But we have no idea what the show lineup is or anything. You can just scroll TikTok to get an idea of what these ads look like now. Every three or four videos, it's somebody selling their skin to you, nice and shiny, or selling you a new pair of shoes, or it's an ad for how you can live stream with this new tech setup. Ads are selling narratives designed to leap out of the feed and embed themselves somewhere into your brain. And this is scientifically speaking too. Emotionally charged and narrative based ads actually enhance our memory because they engage our neural pathways related to emotional processing and memory according to a variety of research papers. It makes the parts of our brains associated with desire and value and emotional engagement totally light up. And it, it gets into our brain to make an impression. Everybody's talking about liquid death. They're not talking about Poland Spring. Let's look at another example that's even harder to understand. Barbie co-star Michael Sarah has been suggesting some connections to Sarah B. Get it? What does he have to say about the actual product? Nothing, really, but the word Sarah V is everywhere because of him. And that's a win for a brand struggling for attention these days. It's eyeballs at any cost, and a large portion of this weird marketing landscape is built on making people feel bad. Social media and celebrity culture can exacerbate money dysmorphia because we're seeing images of people living glamorous lives spending money. No one really wants this. The internet gave us the ability to find the best product, not necessarily the most viral one. Look at the popularity of Wirecutter or Reddit's product reviews. 
or this TikTok creator telling us that millennials were sold influencer pans when they should have stayed with stainless steel and cast iron. Or this guy that got 4 million views simply telling us what vacuums to buy. He's not an influencer, he just really likes vacuums. High quality vacuums. But these efforts cannot counteract the algorithmic power of big tech. Time and time again, we've seen social media's ability to completely overwhelm humans and change them. Push notification by push notification, meme by meme, and ad by ad. Literally thousands of ads per day begging us to consume. And Americans are very, very, very good at consuming. To keep us buying, fashion must be impossible to keep up with. Products must degrade so we buy new ones and people must never feel like they're being influenced. It has to feel authentic and trust is the most expensive commodity in the world, and the brands know that. So instead of slowing down to actually figure out what's happening with social media, brands are tapping into the algorithmic power to sell more things, as brands do. TikTok is taking it to the next level, opening a studio in LA that will have live streaming filled with influencers selling to live audiences. They're also testing a way to sell products appearing in any video using AI. The power of ads is obvious when you look at the bottom line of the most powerful companies on earth. Google is 85% ad sales, even after all of their new initiatives. But it's also obvious when you look at something as small as the Quaker Oats logo. The reason he looks so friendly and nice is because he was meant to connect us to the idea of what oats once were. The simplicity of connecting to the miller, the producer of the oats. A world where the consumers and the producers were connected. Today, we don't think about workers' supply chains and shelves, so how can he keep up with all of these influencers? Both are narratives, but one is constantly changing and is very good at capturing your attention. So that you are thinking about buying things instead of doing things. Or think about all the try-on hauls that are showing you pounds and pounds of clothes every week. And for what? It's about purchasing something to keep up with the trend that you're never going to be able to actually keep up with. Time on social media is compressed, so we experience the past and the present and the future all at once. There's no looking backwards and there's no looking forwards, there's just this weird now. And it becomes this weird dance of consuming the right products to make us feel better, but the products don't actually make us feel better. It's things like finding third places and communities. And none of this is new. This is not a new conversation, but with the Super Bowl coming, the idea of shocking the consumer will be amplified. It's not who has the best products, it's who has the best story and the best storytelling powers, especially on social media. It's who can make us feel the weirdest and make us forget how weird all of this is. It's up to us to realize that these ads exist and our data is for sale just like everything is for sale and to not let every aspect of our being be commoditized.